I sometimes read uh, public domain books here on Leaves of Glen. And they were written a long time ago, uh, so they're usually uh, racist or sexist or bigoted. Uh, but in there somewhere and all that is a, a story, and that's why those stories are famous. Other times, I read uh, works from independent authors, and they're delightfully not racist, but they might have adult language or adult situations. So that's your warning, uh, but I'm sure you uh, are grown up enough to handle it. Don't write to me complaining. Oh, you're back. Well, welcome to the Leaves of Glen Mansion. It's a fun little bit where I pretend to live in a mansion and not just recording in my basement or pretending to record at a cabin. Remember when I did that for like two episodes, pretending to record at a cabin? Uh, that got old. This is old, too. This is where I read the hottest public domain books and short stories. Uh, this week, I'm going to start reading Peter Pan by J.M. Barrie. Uh, I can finally read something about the author, unlike the last book I read. Uh, because there was nothing about him because he was a person writing under a house name, a term I still wish I could use. J.M. Barry was born in May 1860 and died the 19th of June, uh, 1937. He was a Scottish novelist and playwright, best remembered as the creator of Peter Pan. Yeah, born and educated in Scotland before moving to London. Oh, he wrote a number of successful novels and plays, and there he met the Llewellyn Davies boys, uh, who inspired him to write about a, a baby boy uh, who, who has magical adventures in Kensington Gardens, which led him to write Peter Pan, or The Boy Who Wouldn't Grow Up, in 1904. Although he uh, continued to write successfully, Peter Pan uh, overshadowed his other work and is credited with popularizing the name Wendy, of all things. Barry unofficially adopted the Davies boys following the deaths of their parents, which is a really nice thing for him to do. Unlike other authors I've had to read about, this one seems real nice. Barry was made a baronet by George V and a member of the Order of Merit. Before his death, he gave the rights to the Peter Pan works to the Great Ormond Street Hospital for Children in London, which continues to benefit from them. Again, an author who is actually nice. This is a great setup for a book I've never read and a movie I've never watched all the way through, thanks to Disney. Uh, but uh, hopefully it's not racist. Burp. Fun facts from mentalfloss.com? Sure. It's all about Disney. As a young boy, Walt Disney saw a touring production of Peter Pan... Uh, Walt Disney broke his piggy bank to get the money for tickets to the performance starring actress Maude Adams. And he remembered the performance fondly and later asked her, her to look at an early reel of his version of Peter Pan. Uh, she declined. Because <laughs> he's a jerk. Disney said that to her, the Peter whom she created was to her uh, real life and blood. While another's creation of this character would only be a ghost to her. And surmised that Miss Adams is simply living in the past. Oh, so he's a bitter little piece of shit. Walt uh, later landed the title role himself. Perhaps inspired by the performance he saw, Walt went on to play Peter Pan in a school production. No actor ever identified himself with the part he was playing more than I, he said. <laughs> what a self-absorbed pile of shit. Disney had to make a deal with a hospital. Oh, the same hospital that he, uh, the author gave the rights to so they could make money forever off this. Uh, Disney had to make a deal with the hospital to make the movie. Author J.M. Barry famously left the rights to Peter Pan to the Great Ormond Street Hospital when he died. The hospital made a deal with Disney in 1939, giving them the exclusive animation rights. It doesn't receive income from the sales of DVDs or toys, though, because those things weren't in the 1939 contract. Wow, what a bunch of dicks. However, according to the hospital's website, Disney has been very supportive nonetheless. Since 2008, when Disney partnered with Great Ormond Street Hospital Children's Charity, they have raised more than uh, 10 million pounds, or 4.5 million uh, toward the hospital's vital redevelopment program and continue to support the hospital and charity with fundraising events and donations. Well, I'm glad it took until 2008 to finally get their shit together. Disney is the worst thing ever to create by man. Uh, ah, cripe. I thought I had enough content here to get to the clock striking. This clock bit is the most annoying thing on the face of the earth. That's, uh, what's going on in my life? Uh, nothing. I changed the mood of my basement by putting in lamps 
Now my basement's got lamps everywhere, so it feels cozy. A cozy basement that's still full of mice and flies and a couple of bees. I even saw bees recently. Oh, thank God. All right, well, with that, uh, why don't we begin with Chapter 1? Chapter 1. Uh, Peter Breaks Through. All children, except one, grow up. Ah, uh, they soon know that they will grow up, and the way Wendy knew was this. One day, when she was two years old, she was playing in a, in a, in a garden, and she plucked another flower and, and ran with it to her mother. Uh, I suppose she must have looked rather delightful, for Miss Darling put her hand to her heart and cried, Oh, 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 why can't you remain like this forever? And this is all that passed between them on the subject, but henceforth Wendy knew that she must grow up. And you always know after you are two. Two is the beginning of the end. This is really specific. Of course, they lived at 14, and until Wendy came, uh, her mother was the chief one. She was a lovely lady with a romantic mind and such a sweet, mocking mouth <laughs> that her romantic mind uh, was like the, the tiny boxes, one within another, that came from the puzzling East. However, many of you discover there is always one more, and her sweet, mocking mouth had one kiss on it that Wendy could never get, uh, though there it was, perfectly conspicuous in the right corner. Uh, like, what, like a dimple on the side of her mouth? The way Miss Darling won her was this. The many gentlemen who had been boys when she was a girl discovered simultaneously that they loved her. That was so weirdly written. The many gentlemen who had been boys when she was a girl discovered simultaneously that they loved her. And they all ran to her house to propose to her, except Mr. Darling, who took a cab and nipped in first. And so he got her. He got all of her, except the innermost box and the kiss. Is that a dimple? He never knew about the box, and in time, he gave up trying for the kiss, the dimple. I don't know what the hell's going on anymore. Wendy thought Napoleon uh, could have got it, but I could picture him trying and then going off in a passion, slamming the door. Napoleon? Bonaparte? What the fuck is going on in this story? We're only like a couple paragraphs in. I have no idea what the hell I'm reading. Mr. Darling used to boast to Wendy that her mother not only loved him, but respected him. He was one of those deep ones who know about stocks and shares. Of course, uh, no one really knows, but he has quite seemed to know, and, and he often said stocks were up, eh, and, and shares were, were down, in a way that would have made any woman respect him. Kind of sexist. Mrs. Darling was married and white. And at first she kept the, the books perfectly, almost gleefully, as if it were a game. Not so much as a, uh, as a Brussels sprout was missing, but by and by the whole cauliflowers dropped out. What the frick are they talking about? She kept the books perfectly. Okay, the financial books. Uh, but by and by, whole cauliflowers dropped out. And instead of them, there were pictures of babies without faces. What the hell is going on? I have no idea what the hell. I downloaded this from Gutenberg. Did I get some weird perverts version <laughs> where they edited it and uploaded it? She drew them when she should have been totting up. There they were, Mrs. Darling's guesses. Wendy came first, uh, then John, uh, and then uh, Michael. For a week or two after Wendy uh, came, it was uh, doubtful whether they should be able to keep her, as she was another mouth to feed. Mr. Darling was frightfully proud of her, oh, and he was very honorable, and he sat on the edge of Mrs. Darling's bed, holding her hand and, 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 and calculating expenses, while she looked at him imploringly. She wanted to risk it, come what might. But uh, that was not his way. Uh, his way was with a pencil and a piece of paper. And if she confused him with suggestions, he had to begin at the beginning again. Now don't interrupt, he would beg her. I have one pound seventeen here. 
and two and six at the office. Okay, I can cut off my coffee at the office, say uh, ten shillings, uh, making two nine at uh, six. With your uh, with your eighteen and three makes uh, three nine seven. That's cat jump down from the window, landing on the table in the middle of my podcast. God, I hate my cats. With five not not in my checkbook uh, makes eight nine seven. Uh, who is that moving? Uh, eight nine seven dot my carry seven. Don't speak uh, my own. Uh, and on the pound you lit to that man who, who came to the door. I uh, quiet child uh, dot and uh, carry child there. Uh, you've done it. Did I say nine nine seven? Yes, I said nine nine seven. The question is, can we uh, try it for a year on nine nine seven? Trying out keeping a child for a year. The hell is going on? And the math in there was ridiculous. Oh, of course we can't, George, she cried. Uh, But she was prejudiced in Wendy's favor. And he was really the grander character of the two. Was he? He sounds like a dick. Remember Mumps? He warned her almost threateningly. (laughs) And off he went again. Mumps? Oh, one pound. That is uh, what I have put down. Uh, But I dare say it will be more like... Thirsty shillings. Don't speak. Uh, measles, one five. German measles, half a guinea. Uh, makes two fifteen six. I did, don't waggle your finger. Uh, whoop, whoop and cough. Oh, say fifteen shillings. And so on it went. And it added up differently each time. But at last, Wendy just got through. With mumps reduced to twelve six. And the two kinds of measles treated as one. Oh, there was the same excitement over John and Michael, and even a narrower squeak. Uh, But both were kept, and soon you might have seen the three of them going in a row to Miss Folsom's kindergarten school, accompanied by her nurse. Oh, uh, 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 Miss Darling loved to have everything just so. And Mr. Darling had a passion for being exactly like his neighbors, uh, so (laughs) he had a passion for conformity. So, of course, they had a nurse. As they were poor, owing to the amount of milk uh, the children drank, really, this nurse was a prim Newfoundland dog called Nana. God damn this cat. He's got the zoomies and he won't go away. Who had belonged to no one in particular until the darlings engaged her. She had always thought children important, however, and the darlings had become acquainted with her and Kensington Gardens, where she spent most of her spare time peeping into preambulators, and was much hated by careless nursemaids, whom she followed to their homes and complained of their mistress. Oh, she proved to be quite a treasure of a nurse. Uh, How, though, she was at uh, bath time and up at any moment of the night and one of her charges made the slightest cry. Oh, 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 of course, her kennel was in the nursery. Oh, she had a genius for... Why do they keep referring to her like she's a dog, even with a kennel? And she had a genius for knowing when a cough is a thing to have no patience with and when it needs stocking around your throat. Oh, she believed to this last day in old-fashioned remedies, like, uh, like rhubarb belief. Yeah, yeah. It made sounds of contempt over all this newfangled talk about, uh, pfft, germs, and so on. And it was a lesson in propriety to see her escorting the children to school, walking sedately by their side when they were all well-behaved and butting them back into line if they strayed. I still can't stop seeing her as some kind of German shepherd. Like this weird, incredibly intelligent dog that fusses over children. On John's footer days, footer days, she never once forgot his sweater. And she usually carried an umbrella in her mouth in the case of rain. There is a room in the basement of Miss Folsom's school where the nurses wait. Oh, how well, they sat on forms while Nana eh, lay on the floor like a dog. I know, they keep doing this dog thing. But that was the only difference. They affected to ignore her uh, as of an inferior social status to themselves. And she despised their light talk. Oh, she resented visits to the nursery from Mrs. Darling's friends. But if they did come, uh, first she whipped off Michael's pitafore and put him into one of those blue braiding and smoothed out Wendy and made a dash at John's hair. No nursery could possibly have been conducted more correctly. And Mr. Darling knew it. Yet he sometimes wondered uneasily whether the neighbors talked. Oh, he had his position in the city to consider, and Nana also troubled him in another way. He had sometimes a feeling that she did not admire him. I I know she admires you tremendously, George, Miss Darling would assure him, and then she would sign to the children to be specifically nice to Father. Uh, Lovely dances followed in which the only other servant, Lisa, Liza, 
It's Liza, was sometimes allowed to join. Hmm. Such a midget. She looked in her long skirt and maid's cap. Ugh. The story's already starting to have little problems. Uh, oh, I said little problems. That's adorable. Uh, though she had sworn uh, when she engaged that she would never see ten again. The gaiety of those romps! <laughs> yeah, exclamation point. And the gayest of all was Mrs. Darling, who would pirouette so wildly that all you could see was of her was uh, the kiss. And then if you had... Oh, how big is this dimple on her face? And then if you had dashed at her, you might have got it. But there never was a simpler, uh, a simpler, happier family until the coming of Peter Pan... Miss Darling first heard of Peter when she was tidying up her children's minds. Huh? It was the nightly custom of every good mother after her children were asleep to rummage in their minds and put things straight for the next morning. What the hell kind of cult is this? Repacking into their proper places the many articles that have wandered during the day. Ah, oh, if you could keep awake, but of course you can't. <laughs> but you would see your own mother doing this, and you would find it very interesting to watch her. It is quite like tidying up the drawers. Oh, you would see her on her knees, I expect, lingering humorously over some of her contents, uh, wondering where on earth you had picked this thing up. Make a discovery, sweet, not so sweet, pressing this into her cheek, and as if it were nice as a kitten, and hurriedly stowing that out of sight. When you wake in the morning, the naughtiness and evil passions in which you went to bed have been folded up small and placed at the bottom of your mind and, and uh, on top, beautifully aired. There, spread out your prettier thoughts, ready for you to put on. Well, that was bizarre as hell. Uh, kind of reminds me of another thing I thought was bizarre uh, recently, is that uh, Stephen Dorglas, Dorglass.com, um, has spent his life dedicated to the art of glass. And uh, after that, uh, he realized that all that glass dust uh, that he keeps inhaling all the time goes straight to the bladder. Uh, all that glass dust goes straight to the bladder. It just cuts it all up. Little fine cuts everywhere. It's a little mist of glass. Uh, so he got a bladder infection, which made him use uh, Azo, uh, registered mark, men bladder control with Go Less, which is also registered. Frustrated by waking up in the middle of the night with the urge to go to the bathroom? Is it impacting the quality of your sleep? Eh, or, or even though you just went, you feel the urge to go again? Oh, try Azo, men, uh, trademark, bladder control. The supplement designed to help men maintain healthy bladder control and reduce that occasional urgency. It can help support your normal, healthy flow. Oh, it contains clinical strength. Go less. <laughs> clinical strength. Go less. <laughs> <laughs> this crap ingredient that they made up, which you always have to have a register mark next to it. It's, it's clinical strength. <laughs> Doctors are shocked at the power of the go less they stick in this product. Men sourced from pumpkin seed extract. Huh? It comes in a convenient one capsule a day serving. Oh, this unique formula is designed specifically for men and has been shown to support urinary, bladder, and prostate health. And that means less waking up at night with the urge to go and more restful night's sleep. Uh, you may start to notice a difference in as little as uh, four weeks. Uh, no two people are alike. And so be sure to take one capsule a day to realize full benefits. Support healthy bladder control, less urgency, and more sleep. Uh, it's designed for men. That's uh, Azo, Men Bladder Control, with, uh, ooh, clinical strength, go less. You want to hear a review? Uh, one out of five stars by Flaming River 10 months ago said, uh, the title is, Had Absolutely No Effect. I just took my 30th capsule, and they were, like, taking nothing. I wish I could give this product zero stars. One is too much. So, uh, that's what Stephen Dorglass has been up to from uh, Dorglass.com. That's D-O-R-G-L-A-S-S.com. What do they do? Commercial storefronts, automatic entrances, windows, patio doors, mirrors, shower doors, installation, repair, and they design and build almost anything. Uh, their clients are Pottery Barn, Williams, Sonoma, Sherman, Williams, Portillo's, the Salt Cave, which is a place that sucks, uh, and Applebee's. Well, with that, uh, why don't we retire to the master bedroom here in the Leaves of Glen Mansion, where I can read to you uh, reviews of upcoming romance novels from Penguin Random House Books. Hold on. I'm coming. I, uh, oh, what the hell? Why are you, you dressed like a surfer? 
You're literally holding a surfboard that for some reason you glued a taxidermy dog onto. That's disturbing. Uh, uh, what are you pointing at the book? Uh, on the bed. Uh, dog Friendly by Victoria Shad. Ah, uh, great. A burned-out veterinarian takes a much-needed beach vacation where a charming surfer makes waves in her love life and a unique foster pup renews her passion for her work. This book's got it all. Uh, Bohemian-style surfer, cool, sexy guy, and dog love. <laughs> Exhausted veterinarian Morgan Pierce is feeling overworked and underthanked. So when two favorite clients ask her to watch their special needs senior dog in their Nantucket home, oh, she jumps at the chance for a summer break. Ah, she hopes her time on the island will be a reset from the stress of her everyday life. But her chill vacation vibe takes a hit when she gets roped into fostering a challenging but anxious dog uh, and helping plan the local rescue group's glittery annual fundraiser. This is all over the goddamn place. Her trip starts to feel uh, more like vacation when Morgan begins... Uh, uh, falling for Nathan Keating, an irresistible entrepreneur who thinks every problem can be solved by surfboard. He's an entrepreneur and a surfer. <laughs> it's got dogs, uh, glittery fundraisers, uh, an entrepreneur that's also a surfer. This is amazing. Just as the summer is shaping up to be a magical refresh she needs, thanks to a fling, it feels like uh, the beginning of something uh, real. And Hudson, the foster dog who reminds her how much she loves her job, a visit from the estranged brother and a discovery of strange brother and the discovery of who Nathan really is challenges everything. Morgan finds herself at a crossroads, trying to determine if the mistakes of the past must define the future and if she should forgive. Uh, forget and grab hold of a chance to finally rescue herself. This sounds horrible. It's called Dog Friendly. It's uh, coming out 16 bucks, uh, paperback, June 28th. You can find it on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Books, Million, Bookshop.org, Hudson Booksellers, Indiebound, Powell's, Target, and Walmart. That's disgusting, and your outfit is disgusting. I see that you're wearing a tie now. You have no shirt on. You're wearing little surfer shorts. You're holding a surfboard with a dog glued to it, and I can finally see the little tie you had around your neck. That's disturbing. Uh, why don't we go back down to the uh, library and finish reading the rest of this chapter? I don't know whether you have ever seen a map of a person's mind. Ah, you brought the stuffed dog. Gross. The thing looks dusty and ratty. Where did you get that? How old is that taxidermy dog? It's not... It's disturbing. Uh, have you ever seen a map of a person's mind? Doctors sometimes draw maps of other parts of you and of your own map can become intensely interesting. Oh, but catch them trying to draw a map of a child's mind. Oh, which is not only confused, but keeps going round all the time. Oh, there's a, a zigzagging lines on it, uh, just like temperature on a, on a card. And these are probably roads uh, in the island, for the Neverland is always more or less an island with an astonishing splash of color here and there, and, co uh, and coral reefs, eh? and, uh, and rakish-looking craft in the offing, and, uh, and savages, huh? 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 and lonely liars, oh, and gnomes, who are eh, eh, mostly tailors, and, and caves through which a river runs, and princes with uh, six elder brothers. Well, this is, I don't understand anything that I'm reading in this first chapter so far. In a hut, a hut fast going to decay. And one very sm uh, small old lady uh, with a hook nose. Mm, yeah. And it would be an easy map if that were all. Oh, but, oh, but there's also the first day at school. Eh? Uh, religion. Uh, fathers. Uh, the round pond. What? Needlework. <laughs> murders. <laughs> hangings. Verbs that take the date of uh, chocolate pudding day. Uh, getting into braces. Uh, say, 99 three pence for pulling out your tooth yourself, and so on. And either these are a part of the island, or they are another map showing through, and it is all rather confusing, especially as nothing will stand still. Of course, the Neverlands vary a great deal. John's, uh, for instance, had a lagoon uh, with flamingos flying over it, which John was shooting. Well, what? While Michael, who was very small, eh, had a flamingo with lagoons flying over it, and, and John lived in a boat uh, turned upside down on the sands, and Michael in a wigwam. Uh, Wendy in a, in a house of leaves. Weird. Definitely sewn together. Weird. John had no friends. 
<laughs> Michael had friends at night, and Wendy had a, a pet wolf forsaken by its parents. But on the whole, the uh, Neverlands have a family resemblance. And if they stood still in a row, you could say of them that they uh, have each other's nose and so forth. Uh, and on these magic shores, children at play are uh, forever breaching their corcusles. Corcusles. Thank God I'm on a Kindle again. Let's look that up. Uh, corcusles. Uh, a small round boat made of wicker work covered in a watertight material uh, propelled with a paddle. Oh, that was a waste of our time. We too have been there. Uh, we can still hear the sound of the surf, uh, though we shall land no more. Of all detectable islands, the Neverland is the snuggest yeah, and most compact. Not large pff, and sprawly, uh, you know, but with just tedious distances between one adventure to another, but nicely cramped. And when you play at it by day with the chairs and the tablecloth, it is not in the least alarming. But, uh, but in two minutes before you go to sleep, it becomes very real. That is why there are n- n- night lights. Occasionally, in her travels through her children's minds, Miss Darling found things that she could not understand. And uh, of these, quite the most perplexing was the word Peter. Uh, She knew of no Peter, uh, and yet he was here and there in John and Michael's minds while Wendy began to scrawl all over with him. Oh, the name stood out in bolder letters than any of the other words. And uh, Mrs. Darling gazed as she felt that it had an, an oddly cocky appearance. Yes, he's rather cocky, Wendy admitted with regret. Her mother had been questioning her. Hey, but, but who is he, my pet? Oh, my pet. They said my pet. I say my pet all the time, and everyone I know yells at me that it sounds like something a pervert would say, but they just said it in the book. Saying my pet to someone is an affectionate, endearing term. It's normal. I'm going back saying it again. People have shamed me into not saying it. He is Peter Pan. You know, mother... At first, Miss Darling did not know, but after thinking back into her childhood, she just remembered a, a, a Peter Pan uh, who was said to live with the uh, uh, fairies. Oh, there were odd stories about him, and as that, when children died, he went part of the way with them so that they should not be frightened. Uh, she had believed in him at the time, but now that she was married and uh, full of sense, uh, she quite doubted whether there was any such person. Besides, she said to Wendy, uh, he would be uh, grown up by this time. Oh, uh, oh uh, no, uh, uh, he isn't grown up, uh, Wendy assured her confidently. <laughs> Why did I say it like that? And he is just my size. She meant that he was uh, the size of both mind and body, and she didn't know how she knew. She just knew it. Mrs. Darling consulted Mr. Darling, but he smiled and poo-poo. Oh, mark my words, he said. It's some nonsense Dan has been putting into their heads. It's just a sort of idea a dog would have. They keep referring to her as a dog. Is it physically a dog that happens to be able to speak and raise children? Or they refer to this person as a dog? Leave it alone, and it'll blow over. But it would not blow over. And soon, uh, the troublesome boy gave Mrs. Darling quite a shock. Children have the strangest adventures without being troubled by them. Uh, For instance, they may remember to mention, a week after the event happened, uh, when they were in the wood, they had met their dead father who had uh, had a game with them. And it was in this casual way that Wendy, one morning, made a disquieting revelation. Some leaves of a tree had been found on the nursery floor, which certainly were not there when the children went to bed. And Miss Darling... Uh, was puzzling over them when Wendy said with a with a tolerant smile, Oh, I do believe it is Peter Pan again. Whatever do you mean, Wendy? Uh, it's so naughty of him not to wipe his feet. <laughs> Wendy said, sighing. And she uh, was a tiny child. Oh, she explained in quite a matter-of-fact way that she thought Peter uh, sometimes came to the nursery in the night and sat on the foot of her bed and played on his pipes to her. Unfortunately, uh, she never awoke, so he, she didn't know how she knew. She just knew. Uh, what nonsense you talk. Precious. Oh, no one can get into that house without knocking. Now, I think sometimes he comes in by the window, she said. Oh, my love, it is three floors up. Well, we're not the leaves at the foot of the window, mother. That's quite true. Uh, the leaves had been found very near the window. Miss Darling did not know what to think, for it all seemed so natural to Wendy that you should uh, not dismiss it by saying that she had been dreaming. My child, the mother cried, why did you not tell me of this before? Uh, I forgot, said Wendy lightly. She was in a hurry to get her breakfast. Oh, surely she must have been dreaming. But on the other hand, there were the leaves. 
Oh, Miss Darling examined them very carefully. Oh, they were skeleton leaves. Oh, she, was, she was sure they did not come from any tree that grew in England. Well, she crawled about the floor, peering at it with a candle for marks of a, a strange foot, uh, and she rattled the poker up the chimney and then tapped the walls, and she let down a tape from the window to the pavement, and it was a sheer drop of 30 feet without so much as a, a sprout to climb up by. Certainly, Wendy had been dreaming, but Wendy had not been dreaming. At the very next night showed, the night on which the extraordinary adventures of these children may be said to have begun, well, on the night we speak of, all the children were once more in bed, and it happened to be Nana's evening off. Uh, the dog gets a night off, and Miss Darling had bathed them and sung to them till one by one they had let their let go her hand and slid away uh, into the land of sleep. And all were looking so safe and cozy that she smiled at her fears now and sat down tranquilly by the fire to sew. It was something for Michael, who, on his birthday, was getting into shirts. Uh, the fire was warm, however, and the nursery dimly lit by three nightlights. And pre what is a nightlight back then? Some form of candle? Because she just lit a candle to check out the floor so they didn't have a flashlight. So he was lighting like tiny candles and putting them dangerously next to the bed. And presently, the sewing lay on Mrs. Darling's lap. Then her head nodded, oh, so gracefully. She was asleep. Look at the four of them, Wendy and Michael over there. Down there, Mrs. Darling by the fire. Oh, there should have been a fourth nightlight. No, don't have any more of those nightlights in the room. You're going to burn the house down. And while she slept, she had a dream. She dreamt that the Neverland had come too near and that a strange boy had broken through it. Oh, he did not alarm her, for she thought that she had seen him before in the faces of many women who have uh, no children. Perhaps he is to be found in the faces of some of the mothers also. What does any of that mean? But in her dream, she had to rent the film that obscures the Neverland. And she saw Wendy and John and Michael peeping through the gap. The dream by itself would have uh, been a trifle, but while she was dreaming, the window of the nursery blew open, and a boy did drop on the floor. Oh, he was accompanied by a strange light, uh, no bigger than your fist, uh, which darted about the room like a living thing, and I think it must have uh, been this light that awakened Mrs. Darling. That's terrifying. Something the size of a fist? Not that I'm trying to say I got, like, giant hands or anything, but uh, that's kind of a big ball. That's kind of terrifying. She started up with a cry and saw the boy, and somehow she knew at once that it was Peter Pan. Or if you, I, or Wendy had been there, we should have seen that this was very like Mrs. Darling's kiss. What? He was a lovely boy, clad in skeleton leaves and the juices that ooze out of trees. But the most entrancing thing about him, what, not the juices, was that he had all his first teeth. And when he saw that she was a, a grown-up, oh, he gnashed the little pearls at her. Oh, well, that was really fucked up. Why don't we go back to the uh, smoking room and try to review what the hell we just read? Well, uh, here we are back in the smoking room to try and review what the hell we just read. Also, I keep forgetting that there's a bit where my girlfriend brought a parakeet into the smoking room. So there's that that we get to deal with for the rest of this section. Uh, recap. I kind of don't know what the hell went on. Uh, I don't know if somehow this author stumbled across magical realism in a way that no other author had at that time. What, 1907? Burp. That, uh, is the nanny some kind of dog? Or is he a jerk and keeps referring to the nanny as a dog and her room being a kennel and uh, she's what? They sound like a German shepherd? I forget already. Uh, horrible or whimsical? I can't decide. Uh, there's a lot of other references to stuff. Uh, the entire thing about the money from the dad talking. The idea that you would try out having a kid for a year and then be like, nap, this sucks, and then just what, give the child away to an orphanage. I can't tell what the hell's happening in this story. Um, but in the end, the mom who's got a kiss on the side of her face, I'm going to say it's a dimple. That dimple plays a major part in the first chapter for some weird reason. I love how this dimple must be so deep and so wide that if she's pirouetting around at this dance, uh, all you can see is the dimple. Uh, that's weird that people want to lunge at it and kiss it. Or 
Is it just that she's got an extra mouth on the side of her mouth and that mouth is always puckered like it wants to kiss? They keep calling it a kiss. I don't know what the hell it is. Uh, what's good? Uh, it's entertaining because I have no idea what's happening. Uh, but that's, yeah, what sucks? I think they're calling the nanny a dog. I'm hoping the nanny's actually a dog. No, I think they're just calling her a dog. And what did we learn? We learned that uh, even though you're a very nice person that uh, helps out little kids, and basically you write an entire book for these two little kids, and when those little kids' parents die, you formally adopt them, or informally, I forget what it was, uh, you can be a great person. Then you write this wildly popular story that you're pretty much known for for the rest of your life against your will, uh, and then uh, you take the, the rights to that book and you give it to a children's hospital. A great person. Can a, an incredibly kind, empathetic, nice person write a book that makes any sense? Apparently not. So, uh, with that, thanks for listening, and uh, I will see you next week when I read Chapter 2. Ah, uh, well, it appears you found me in the part of the podcast I hate the most where I tell you all about the places on the internet where you can find me. You can tell I hate this because of the sound effects making it sound like a stormy night uh, in the drawing room of the damned. Now, there's there's that. Uh, I, I, are you cool? I like cool people. It's the reason why I got involved in this business to begin with, just to meet cool people. Not losers. So if you're cool, uh, feel free to go over to my website, uh, nuzzlehouse.com. You can see a backlog of everything I've ever read, uh, along with episodes from the Book Boys and uh, blah, blah, blah. You can also find me on Instagram, uh, which is uh, House Nuzzle. And conveniently enough, uh, Twitter, which is also at House Nuzzle. Annoyingly, YouTube made me pick a name instead of just a house nuzzle. So you got Glenn Nuzzles. So I guess you search for that if you want to watch a screen that doesn't do anything and just hear my voice. Uh, and since, uh, since I think you might be cool, you can always just email me directly. Glenn.nuzzles at gmail.com But don't, uh, don't email if you're a, a nerdlinger or a dork. Now, back to business. I can't believe I drank all of them already. There's got to be one left.